So E3 2015 is officially over, and in my honest opinion, it's been a really good E3. I'm really looking forward to a lot of the games that were shown off at the show this year. And the rest of 2015, if this E3 is any indication, is shaping up to be a pretty good year. So I figured the best thing to do at the end of this show is to talk about this show. We're going to take a look at some of the biggest individual highlights of the game and run down some of the strengths and negatives of the presentations of each of the three major publishers. Now there were some great games that got shown off at E3 this year. There were the expected ones, Halo 5, Gears 4, Uncharted, Black Ops 3, the ones everyone expected to see, you know, Fallout 4 obviously, which, take my money now, Bethesda, now. <laughs> but anyways, there were also some other really cool games that I was really excited to see at E3. Of course, it was great to see more of games like No Man's Sky, which I'm really excited for, and Tacoma, which looks great. Um, ReCore is one I just heard about, and it looks fantastic. I'm extremely interested in ReCore. Uh, the new Tomb Raider game, obviously. Dishonored 2 had an amazing trailer at E3 this year. XCOM 2, I'm really excited for. Uh, the Gears of War collection, in addition to Gears 4, which... Eh, I mean, okay, a collection. They're HD. New Hitman game. Of course, the Final Fantasy VII remake, which just blew, kind of blew up the internet. Kingdom Hearts 3. There, it's, there have just been so many great games to come out of E3 this year. And with a lot of them coming out just later this year, it's shaping up to be a really great Christmas season. And going into the first quarter of 2016, there's just so much good stuff on the way fairly soon that I cannot wait to get my hands on. Rainbow Six Siege, forgot to mention that one, got another trailer at E3. Extremely pumped for that game. Cannot wait to play it. No one's going to play it right. It's never going to play out like it does in the trailers where they're all using teamwork and they're like running through and like flanking and kicking down doors with my awesome karate kicks there. No one's going to do that, but I want it anyways. It's going it to look so good. And while I was on the topic of games and having mentioned Fallout 4, Bethesda announced that PC mods for Fallout 4 will be usable on Xbox One and hopefully PS4 not too long after the game launches, which I'm really excited about because that means I no longer have to worry about whether or not my crappy PC will be able to run Fallout 4. Granted, I don't know all the details on how this works. No one does. There's probably going to be some limitations, which means you guys that love your, your, your nude mods for your Bethesda, with the, which I don't get because they got the potato faces characters so on natural, probably not going to get those on consoles anytime soon. Probably be a lot harder to get licensed mods, like mods for like they have the Pulse Rifle for New Vegas. Those will probably be a lot harder, if impossible, to get on console. But it's still really awesome to know that PC mods for Fallout 4 will be coming at least to the Xbox One, which is what I play, and hopefully to the PS4 not long after that, which is great, because like I said, I no longer have to worry about getting a new PC just to play Fallout 4, because I don't know if my old piece of crap computer would be able to handle it. So I'm really, really happy about that. Didn't really think that would ever actually happen, actually, which is really cool to see that it is. I never thought Microsoft and Sony would open up to something like that, so I'm glad to see that they're willing to. So yeah, got a lot of awesome games at E3 this year that I'm really, really excited for, but what about the actual presentations? How did Microsoft, Nintendo, and Sony do in their individual presentations? Freaking amazing! Even the big companies' presentations were just awesome. This was, I, I can't stress it enough, this has been one of the best E3s in a long time, in my opinion. Let's look at Microsoft's first. I might would go as far as to say that Microsoft's presentation this year was actually the best. Obviously, it had some, it, some really strong exclusives. Halo 5, Gears 4, uh, Forza, just to name a few. But they also 
gave a lot of attention to indie games on the Xbox One, which was really refreshing because the 360 really lacked indies compared to uh, compared to Steam and the PS3. The 360 had very few standout indie titles, so to see that Microsoft is actually putting a lot of emphasis on that with the Xbox One is really great. And the indies they showed off just looked fantastic. Tacoma is coming to the Xbox One. Cuphead, the game with that art style like the old 1920s cartoons, I am really interested in playing that game. Um, Gigantic, The Long Dark, which God, yes. Um, Ashen, just, just a ton of really cool looking indie games coming to Xbox One, which I was really, again, really glad to see that Microsoft learned from the mistake of, of just avoiding indies altogether on the 360. They've learned from that and they're bringing those to the Xbox One, which is great. Aside from that, they showed off a couple of cool new first-party properties. Uh, sea of Thieves, in particular, I was really interested in. That one's coming from Rare. I love the art style. The trailer they showed off looked pretty interesting. I'm definitely going to be keeping my eye on that game. They showed off the HoloLens, which looks pretty cool. Not sure yet. Gonna hold off making any kind of judgment until release. But what we saw this year looked pretty cool. Certainly looks like it has potential to be a better peripheral than Connect was, at least. God, I hope. And they also showed off 360 backwards compatibility for the Bone now. They're basically building a 360 emulator for the Xbox One that will let you play your games as if you're playing on a 360. Which I can understand why it's taken this long. The architecture for the Xbox One as opposed to the 360, totally different. I can understand why it took this long, but still, I'm really excited to see that that is finally coming. That's been something I've been looking forward to for a while. So overall, I'd say this has been Microsoft's strongest E3 in quite some time. Last year's E3, they were all about damage control and trying to salvage the god-awful reputation that the Xbox One had gotten leading up to and immediately after its release. And now that they've done that, it's all about building an identity for the Xbox One, I think, and showing off all the awesome games that are coming out on it. And they did a great job. They got me really hyped up for it, and they finally got rid of the slight buyer's remorse I've always had for getting an Xbox One as opposed to a PS4. I no longer have that. I'm, I'm very excited for the games that are coming out on the Xbox One later this year. Microsoft did a great job at E3 this year, and I'm really looking forward to what comes out of them in the next few months. So the next big presentation was obviously Nintendo's Nintendo Direct showings for E3, which were decent, but overall I think Nintendo's output this year was probably the weakest. They showed off some good-looking games, don't get me wrong, a lot of what they showed looked really fun, but they lacked a big exclusive or a big reveal to draw you in like three, or excuse me, Xbox One and PlayStation 4 had. They showed off a bunch of smaller little titles that all look fun, but their show would have really benefited from like a trailer for that new Zelda that they've been talking about for the Wii U, the one that got pushed back to next year. Doesn't have to even have to be anything big, but just a trailer or something about that to get fans hyped up again really would have benefited Nintendo this year. As it stands, we saw some pretty cool stuff. They showed off co-op focused 3DS Zelda and Metroid Prime titles, which looked fun. I might have to give those a shot. Um, we got trailers for Xenoblade Chronicles X and Fire Emblem Fates, which is great, of course. Uh, the new Yoshi game that they've been talking about for, like, a year now, that's finally gotten trailers and release dates, so that's great and adorable, of course, because it's Yoshi. The house-building Animal Crossing game looks like it's going to destroy lives because it's taking the most addictive part of Animal Crossing and building a whole game around it, and it's going to eat people's lives away because that's what Animal Crossing does. I'm still really excited for Super Mario Maker. Maybe it's just my inner amateur indie hipster game dev nerd coming out, but the thought of a game that basically lets you build your own Mario game, 
I'm really interested in playing that one. I really want to give that one a shot, so it was great to see that this year. And then finally, the one really big exclusive that Nintendo had was Star Fox Zero, which I'm not sure yet. Of course, it's Star Fox. Star Fox is always great. Uh, and I trust that Nintendo will make a good final product, but what we saw this year did not make the best first impression. The control scheme from everything I've seen seems really clunky and hard to get a good grasp of. Everything I've heard about it said it was very difficult to use at first. It looked confusing. I have hope that Nintendo will salvage it, but it didn't make the best first impression. I'm not going to lie. Overall, Nintendo showed off some fun-looking games. They've got some stuff that I'm actually excited for, but the presentation lacked the, the scale and, and size and just impressive scope of Sony and Microsoft's. And with the Wii U really struggling like it is now, and the rumors already circulating about Nintendo making a new console, I believe that might have been confirmed, I can't remember off the top of my head, but with the Wii U really failing like this, Nintendo needed to show off something big. They needed to do what Microsoft did this year, and they didn't. They played it a little too safe, I thought. They showed off some fun stuff, but I was hoping for a little more. And finally, Sony's presentation. Holy crap, Sony's presentation. Microsoft was stellar. I wasn't sure Sony could compete, but oh boy did they. Oh boy did they. For starters, there's the fact that The Last Guardian and Shinmu 3 got trailers. They officially exist. The Last Guardian and Shinmu 3 officially exist. Shinmu 3, it broke the record for the fastest Kickstarter ever completed. It earned $2 million in, I believe, like an hour and a half. That's how big this announcement was. Between those and Fallout 4, if we had heard about Half-Life 3 at this E3 as well, the internet would have imploded in on itself from all of the hype. And, oh my god. Shenmue 3 and The Last Guardian. That's, that's, I, that, it's, that right there was enough to make this an amazing E3 for Sony. But they also showed off a bunch of other great games. Of course, they had the Final Fantasy VII Remake, which, you know, personally, I question the necessity of a remake, but at the same time, the reaction it got was kind of universal, oh god, yes. So, you know what? I'm going to suspend my judgment, because I have to admit, it looked pretty awesome. Of course, with No Man's Sky being a PS4 and PC exclusive, we saw some stuff from that. At Sony's presentation, which again, No Man's Sky, I can't get enough of that. I must play that. Another game at Sony's presentation that really grabbed my attention was Media Molecule's Dreams, which looks really interesting. I, if you haven't already seen the trailer for that, I strongly recommend you look at that game. That was... I'm really interested in that one. Um... Really, the only big, weak part of Sony's show I can think of was they kind of really glanced over the Vita in any way, which is disappointing that Sony seems to just kind of be letting the Vita die off. And their big Black Ops 3 kind of demonstration that they showed off, because they are partnered with Activision a bit for Black Ops 3, that was just kind of meh. I'm a little burnt out on Call of Duty, not gonna lie, so Black Ops 3 was not even on my list of things I cared about, and I thought that was a pretty disappointing way to lead out the show, but overall, Sony had a phenomenal E3 this year as well. Great exclusives, great indie titles, it was just... Shinmu 3 and The Last Guardian, I don't think I even need to say anymore when I'm discussing Sony's E3 presentation this year. I... I I, 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 I don't I don't even know I can't even say it word I don't, I'm gonna stop so yeah overall this has just been a fantastic e3 all around Sony and Microsoft killed it with some phenomenal reveals great 
exclusives and information on games we already knew about but really wanted to hear more from. Nintendo didn't quite bring it like I hoped they did, but most of the games that they showed off still looked interested and I'm still looking forward to playing quite a few of them. Fallout 4, XCOM 2, Super Mario Maker, oh god, Dishonored 2, Tacoma, No Man's Sky, I, I can't even, I can't even, Shenmue, Halo, I just can't get over how many phenomenal games we've seen at this year's E3. It's just incredible. If this, if this presentation was any indication for what's to come, I, we've got a phenomenal rest of 2015 and first half of 2016 waiting for us. It's been a great E3, guys. If it sounds like I'm gushing, it's because I am. I, I haven't been this excited about upcoming games in quite some time. I really haven't. Very impressed with this year's E3. Very happy with what I saw. And hopefully, for those of you that missed something, I kind of filled you in on hopefully the most important parts. But definitely go and check out more recaps and, and videos on this year's E3 if, if you heard something that you're interested in here or elsewhere, because there was so much great stuff at this year's E3, I couldn't possibly mention all of it. Uh, another one I'm really looking forward to that I didn't even touch on is the new Homefront game. I know the first one was kind of meh, but I can't help it. The trailers look awesome. I want it. So yeah, this year's E3 was fantastic. I hope you guys got something out of this if you had missed something big at this year's E3, or if I reminded you of something you wanted to learn more from. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, of course, likes are appreciated. More stuff to come. I apologize that I've been away for so long. I know I do that. I'm sorry, but there's more stuff to come very soon. So please be sure to stick around for that. As always, I hope you enjoyed what you saw, and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.